On the news, Nigerian police affirms release of kidnapped medical student says no ransom paid. Niger State seeks military interventions as bandits overturn community. An anonymous whistleblower arrested for leaking classified documents. It's a pleasure to have you join us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Okbayemi Yowosheni. The Nigerian police force says no ransom was paid to secure the release of the 20 medical students kidnapped in Benue State. The first statement comes after speculation and rumors circulated on social media suggesting that a ransom had been paid to the abductors. In a statement by Force Public Relations Officer ACP Muiwa Dejobi said no cover was paid to secure their release and the victims were released tactically and professionally. The medical students were kidnapped on 15th of August 2024 along the Otsuko Enugu Federal Highway in Otsuko local government area of Benue State on their way to Enugu State to attend a conference. The police are, however, here to provide details of the rescue, including whether any of the kidnappers were arrested or killed. The acting governor of Niger State, Yakubu Gaba, has called on the Nigerian government to urgently redeploy military forces to the Alawa community in the Shiroro local government area of the state. The community was recently overrun by armed bandits. The Nigerian government had withdrawn troops from the area five months ago, a decision that has left the community vulnerable to attacks by bandits. Governor Gaba's appeal came in the wake of a fresh devastating attack on Wednesday, where 13 farmers were brutally killed while working in their field on the outskirts of the Alawa community. The attack has further exacerbated the insecurity in the region, leaving residents in fear for their lives and prompting many to flee to safer areas. Away from security issues now, the controversy over the contract signed by the Ogun State Government and Chinese firm Zongshan Funcheng Industrial Limited, leading to the seizure of three Nigerian aircraft in France and other assets in some countries far away from over. The company, which had earlier secured a court judgment in France to seize two Nigerian presidential planes, is also working to confiscate two properties in Liverpool belonging to the Nigerian government. Speaking on TV360's flagship program, public affairs analyst Adewali Ajadi says there is a need for stricter oversight of obligations entered into by state government as well as greater transparency. Ajadi proposed the establishment of a dedicated risk management office to ensure effective checks and balances on foreign agreements signed by the country. It is clear that we need to tighten up on the obligations that are entered into by state government. It is very clear that we have to make sure that there's greater transparency about all of these things um, because of the consequences of the different arbitration. And I wonder why the choice of arbitration is so rich large in our contract. And we put ourselves in very vulnerable position. And let me skip all of these things to say directly that I think the most important thing is to have an office of risk management, a federal mm -hmm. office of risk management that has copies of all of these things. So everything that puts um, states and puts the, the federal government in commitment internationally um, are, are, are copied into this risk office. And this risk office keeps um, um, checks and balances in place and possibly makes provisions for these situations that would happen inevitably. They would happen. And then we also need to know um, all our assets internationally. Because if these people are going to put us at very vulnerable positions, we have to manage our risks effectively. We have to be better as a nation at organizing ourselves, at being detail conscious, at managing our exposure, managing our risks. And, you know, this the, the fact that we're always looking for someone to blame. You know, we're always looking for someone to blame. Oh, it's the Chinese firm. The Chinese firm is looking for its own interest. Hmm. Why, why would the Chinese firm be, you, they, they lost the contract that they, 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 they were committed to and were doing to the best of their ability. And now you are now saying that they're trying to get anything. Of course, they're trying to get something out of 
Is there any contractor that won't try to get something out of something where they've shown commitment and they've expended money? So the, the, we we have to stop, you know, playing to the gallery and, and hooking the blame on lawyers who are involved in the process, this person, that person. The PR indeed has constantly been raised was the, 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 the hook that was used to save Nigeria as an escape clause was 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 actually scapegoating one of our own lawyers. Ogun State Governor Dakma Abiodun flagged off the construction of the 70-kilometer Abiokuta E4 Ota Lagos Expressway on Friday. According to reports, the attempt to reconstruct the road was first conceived in 2019, but all efforts to convince the Nigerian government to release the road to the Ogun State government proved abortive. Speaking during the flag off at Iwari Ewe Koro local government area, the governor pledged its completion within 18 months. Abiodun added that the road is important not just to Ogun State, but as well as to Lagos State and the nation, as it serves as a route for people traveling to surrounding countries. Diverse reactions have continued to chill the Nigerian police force invitation to the Nigerian Labour Congress President Joajero over allegations of criminal conspiracy and terrorism financing. Earlier this week, the NLC threatened a nationwide strike and protest if Ajero and or any of its leaders were detained or armed as a result of the police actions. Speaking in an exclusive interview with TV360 Nigeria, the head of information and publicity for the NLC, Benton Upa, emphasized that the union is Serious about his stand. He warned that the NLC would not hesitate to strike if any harm came to Ajero during the police investigation. Upa also accused the Nigerian government of interfering in the affairs of the NLC and other unions, asserting that the union is not using strikes as a weapon, but is instead seeking to protect its members. In the event anything ugly happens to Joe Ajero again, because last year in November, he was abducted, beaten, battered by the same agents, the same police and their collaborators and those who sent them. And now they are asking him, at this time around, uh, it is terrorism and so on and so forth. So we said, in the event anything happens to him, we will go out there. We will go, we will go for broke and make no mistake about this. We have the will, we have the capacity, I'll have Nigerians behind us. Are you waiting for the police to drop a bomb on this on these premises to know that the police have started a hostile action? Are you waiting for Jajero to be murdered? That is the time now you begin to that is the time you want us to flex our muscles. You want an irreparable damage to be done? Tell those Nigerians who are not as naive as them. Those, I mean, those who believe we are weaponizing strike. Tell them that we are not as naive as them. That this government is up to some mischief against us. We did say that government has waged a that government was waging a hybrid war uh, on us, and we went on to show you facts and figures. We told you. In spite of our, our saying we are not going to be part of the, the end hunger pr protests, mm. government on the eve of that protest sent us a letter of warning signed by the Register of Trade Unions saying, as threatening us, asking us to explain our relationship with the Labour Party. Government also... Um, interfered with the internal um, running of the unions by way of saying or, or signaling interest in the tenor of trade union executives. In, in other words, trying to say that union executives should hold office no longer than, no more than two years. And we said, well, that will amount to the to the interference in the running of, of the unions, which is against the law. And if government, if you must insist on two-year tenure, everybody should do two years, including the president <laughs> of this country. 
The Nigeria Police Force has said the officials from the National Cyber Crime Center arrested one Bristol terminal BFRA, also known as Pidum, for allegedly undermining the integrity of government operations. The anonymous whistleblower on X was declared missing after his long absence from the digital space. He was well known for exposing high-profile corruption and human rights abuses in Nigeria and has gone silent since August 5, 2024. With over 200,000 followers, his prolonged absence sparked concerns among the Nigerian online community, prompting a trending campaign, hashtag FreePDOM, calling for his release. The police said PDOM Nigeria was arrested on August 5th in his hotel room in River State. In a statement on Saturday by the Public Police Relations Officer Muiwa Dejobi, the police said other allegations against him are unlawful possession, leakages of classified documents, and cyber related offenses. Adejobi assured of, of a painstaking investigation will be conducted into the allegations leveled against PDOM. The Black's Ancestral Native Communities Bank Foundation has urged African leaders at all levels to intensify effort to combat irregular migration. This call was made by Bank's Foundation's founder and CEO Chibuso Oyema during a media briefing on Friday. Now, to address irregular migration, Bank Foundation, in collaboration with Blacks in All Nations Community USA and Echo Center for Africa Canada, has organized the Anti Irregular Migration Summit. The summit aims to develop actionable strategies that tackle the root causes of migration. According to Oyema, the summit is scheduled for Thursday, 19th of September at Nigeria Air Force Conference Center, FCT Abuja. He urged attendees to join in securing a brighter future for Nigeria, Africa, and the whole world at large. If we can't find employment for them, all of them that have been trained in Nigeria, the nations that have indicated interest in areas of need can recruit them and sponsor them to go and work legitimately in their countries. That for us, in fact, is key because this young people's hope becomes broadened when they see that, because some of them also go by the narratives that home is impossible and there is just nothing they can do anymore. I have people who say, look, it has reached me to the neck. If I don't get out of Nigeria in months, I'll commit suicide. And you see them committing it already. Nigerian young people hardly committed suicide 10 years ago. But I can say to you that that's not the same as at today. And so we want to expand their hope quotients so that they can see that the future indeed is brighter than they thought and than the narratives of gloom that they get from the media. And so when we have them all trained and they are now equipped to the standard, global standard, they can go and work in places where they readily need them. I know that job opportunities are real globally. As I sit here, I can tell you top of my head, up to 22 countries that are in their need of labor. So we may supply labor to such countries where our young people don't find ready jobs. And that's why we are saying to governments, partner us. Let us know areas where you need these young people so we can trace we can train them call it bespoke training if you wish to fit into those areas of need the chairman of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLE, Buba Marwa, has said that unity and patriotism remain the key to achieving Nigeria's greatness. Marwa said this at the 40th anniversary and reunion of the Nigerian Military School, NMS 1984 set on Saturday in Abuja. Speaking on the theme of the event, leveraging on Nigeria's diversity for inclusive nation building, pathway to leadership, stability and prosperity. The NDLEA boss congratulated the 1984 set on their achievement, noting that their success was a testament to the quality of training they received at the NMS. He expressed concerns over the challenges facing the country, including ethnic and religious divisions, urging Nigerians to remain committed to a united country. 
And in Kebe State, the government has distributed free drugs to about 27,000 mentally ill patients across the 21 local government areas of the state. The Commissioner for Special Duties, Zayam Umar Aleiro, made this known as Ajia Turao Yaradoa General Hospital Zauro on Saturday. The government advised parents and guardians to strictly adhere to prescription in administering the drugs on their children and relatives to avoid complications and also avoid selling the drugs for self-benefit. Umar Aleiro also announced that the state government had added free feeding and transportation for all the patients from all 21 councils of the state. We'll take a break here, but still to come on the news, Atlant FC coach Christian Obi dies in road accident. Details of the story after this break. Welcome back. Now a quick recap of our top stories. The Nigerian police force has denied claims that a ransom was paid to secure the release of 20 medical students who were kidnapped in Benue State. According to First Public Relations Officer ACP Muiwa Adejobi, the students were free through tactical and professional effort with no money exchanged in the process. The students were abducted on August 15, 2024 along the Otsupo Enugu Highway in Benue State when en route to a conference in Enugu. We also told you that the acting governor of Niger State, Yakubu Gaba, has urgently called on the Nigerian government to redeploy military forces to the Alawa community in Shiroro local government area of the state, which has recently been overrun by armed bandits. The withdrawal of troops from the area five months ago has left the community vulnerable to frequent attacks, including a recent assault on Wednesday that resulted in the brutal killing of 13 farmers. Now, in case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV and AVO TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360Nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery and Apple Store. On Facebook, we are TV360 Online. Get ready for the 8th edition of the Voice of Women Conference and Awards, VAL 2024. Theme, Achieving Women's Inclusion for a Sustainable Nigeria. Mark your calendar for Thursday, 3rd of October 2024, 9 a.m. at the NAV Conference Center, Abuja, Nigeria. And be part of a national dialogue bringing together grassroots and urban women in the quest for inclusion and sustainability in Nigeria. VAL 2024 is more than just a conference. It's a powerful movement. VAL 2024, an initiative of Voice of Women Empowerment Foundation and Women Radio, is where diverse women groups converge to champion inclusive policies and drive national development. Still in the world of business, the African Development Bank supported Afri Circular Innovators Program has selected 30 small and medium enterprises to receive financing and technical assistance to scale up their circular economy initiatives. The bank in a statement on Saturday said that this inaugural court, jumped from Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana and Rwanda, participated in its online onboarding event on August 9, 2024. According to the statement, the program aims to support innovative circular economy solutions that foster sustainable and inclusive growth. It said that micro, small and medium enterprises represented 80% of Africa's businesses, while the circular economy in Africa had the potential to generate 11 million jobs. 
An expert have commended the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission's decision to grant permits to MTN Communications Nigeria Limited, Golden Penny Power Limited, Even Eel Synergy, and other companies for mini grid electricity generation. This move is expected to enhance off grid power solutions across the country. Emeka Ojoko, the executive director of Nepawa Ala Engi, commented on the development, noting that the permits will enable mini grid operators to establish their plants in on these underserved areas. He also highlighted that this would allow them to negotiate tariffs with the host of the communities. It's a good development. Uh, sometime last year, NEC passed an amendment to the existing mini-grid regulations. Mm. Um, the first one was passed in 2016 and it was outdated. But this uh, regulation that was passed in December last year basically uh, created a more flexible regime for NEC to grant um, licenses, mini-grid licenses to, um, to designated companies for them to provide electricity to underserved areas, primarily the rural areas. Okay, uh, the significance is this, that most of the discos will not typically extend service to the rural areas because of the low returns that it gets from those areas. Okay, low returns in terms of uh, the, the, the tariffs that uh, people in those areas are willing to pay and the absence of industries in those areas that would uh, serve as a backbone hmm. for their revenue generation. So because of that, rural areas are underserved, uh, the REA, uh, has been mostly responsible trying to get power supply to those areas. But with this new regulation now, um, mini grid uh, holders are allowed to now set up their plants in these underserved areas and then negotiate with them for uh, tariffs that those areas are willing to pay. Right? Unlike what we have with the discos, where um, the tariffs are set by NEC. Okay, and um, for those who are who are on the band A tariff, will be crying right now at the <laughs> at, at, at the extremely that, high rates yeah. that we are paying for power supply. But with the mini grid holders, they are allowed to negotiate with the host with the with their customers, and then agree on a rate for them to supply power to them. Now, I need to make this point here quickly that. Um, the permit granted to MTN mm. is not a mini grid permit. The permit that was given to them was to set up captive generating plant. Okay, that means that um, they are they are they are supplying they are they are generating power for their own consumption for their for their cell sites or something. Not to sell to consumers. Yes, not to sell to consumers. But the ones granted to um, to Golden Penny is for mini grid. Uh, operations which would allow them to sell to consumers at rates that they can negotiate with the consumer as lesser than what um well let me not say less but we hope that it will less mm. than what those consumers typically would pay um to uh, the discos that yeah. ordinarily cover those states on the foreign scene, Russia and Ukraine have exchanged 115 prisoners of war from each side. Both countries confirmed with the United Arab Emirates acting as an intermediary. It was the UAE, UAE's seventh mediation effort this year between the two countries, while Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said 115 Ukrainian POWs were returned from Russia. Russia confirmed that 115 of its servicemen captured in Kursk region during Ukraine's ongoing incursion were released. But side have carried out periodic prisoner swaps via intermediaries since the war began nearly two years ago despite the absence of any peace talks between them since the early months of the conflict. Still on the foreign scene, prosecutors and Italy said they have opened an investigation into culpable shipwreck and multiple manslaughter after a super yacht capsized during a storm off the coast of Sicily, killing seven people on board. They included British tech magnate Mike Lynch and his daughter. The vessel was carrying 12 passengers and 10 crew members. Prosecutor Ambro Gilt Catosio confirmed the investigation has been launched but said no suspect is currently identified. Investigators are baffled that a yacht deemed unsinkable by its Italian manufacturer's parents sank while a nearby sailboat remained largely unscathed. 
And finally on sport, Atlanta Football Club confirmed that head coach Samson Obi has died following a car accident. The club's media officer, Tundi Liadi, confirmed the incident in a statement issued in Oweri and made available to newsmen on Saturday. He explained that the accident happened when their Costa bus collided with a stationary truck while trying to avoid a head-on collision with an oncoming vehicle. He added that there was at least 20 members of the team in the bus and that some players sustained various degrees of injuries in the accident. Still on sport, Edo Queens have secured a spot in the CAF Women's Champions League after a resounding 3 0 victory over Benin Republic in the final of the Wafu B Women's Championship in Abidjan on Friday. The Nigerian champions capped a flawless campaign with the dominant win, showcasing their superiority throughout the regional qualifiers. Edo Queen's triumph not only secures their place in the prestigious continental competition, but also highlights the growing strength of Nigerian women football. As they prepare to take on Africa's best in the CAF Women's Championship League, their success serves as a source of pride for their supporters and an entire nation. And that was our news bulletin on news now at this time. Many thanks for joining us. I'm Okbayemi Uwoshini. See you next time.